So essentially, we were born to uh, essentially solve the problem of consumer awareness in solar. So you know, we as an industry, we understand the great IRRs, the great uh, technology that works is proven, but the consumers unfortunately do not. So they don't either trust the technology, uh, or they don't trust the industry companies, or they don't just trust the solutions. So we bring in various ways of uh, addressing this uh, trust gap and helping them bring in more solar. So at the base, uh, we're a software for uh, system design and sales growth, uh, where you know any uh, salesman or an engineer can uh, draw, like, design solar systems uh, very quickly. Uh, some USPs are you can get very accurate data and uh, like more optimized system designs as compared to other prevailing software. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Asmita, heading business development at Dutch Renewables. We are into solar EPC of residential segment and uh, consultancy of government licensing and other strategy related work. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rajesh Kusta, looking after solar division for Havels Indian Limited. We are working for solar for the last three years and we are in on grid systems, off grid systems, and coming with hybrid systems. And we have a complete range of uh, panels, inverters, on grid inverters, and other products of uh, solar products basically. We have manufacturing unit for ACDV box, DCDV box, and we have uh, cable man factories in Alwar, in Rana. We have complete range for AC cables and DC cables. Now, from last three years, we are working for solar, and uh, we are very keen to uh, share the last. Uh, three years, we have uh, touched around 100 megawatt uh, within three years, and we are planning to increase in uh, production rate for on grid systems with hybrid systems also. Sure, thank you. Good afternoon again. Uh, I am Deepak Jain, representing Goldi Solar. We are one of the leading uh, PV module manufacturers, uh, having 500 megawatt capacity uh, now, and uh, we are enhancing it by another 600 megawatt. Uh, in next six months time we will cross the 1.2 gigawatt mark uh, apart from that uh, we are a EPC company focusing on the rooftop segment in Gujarat state and uh, we are entering into IPP business uh, wherein uh, we are developing 100 megawatt uh, site and uh, to start with uh, 10 megawatt will be the first project and uh, that will be again in Gujarat and second stage will be out of Gujarat so we will uh, uh, enter into other states also yeah, uh, in, in case of IP. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Akash Gupta from Tech Constructions. Uh, basically we are distributors of uh, Adani solar modules and AVB solar inverters. 
Apart from that, we are a TPC company. We have been into TPC business since 30 years now, in two different EPC verticals. And uh, regarding our latest vertical is into electric vehicle charging infrastructure. In that, uh, we have been in panel vendors, we have been preferred vendors for Hyundai, Porsche, Audi, uh, Renault, and uh, ABB. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Richard from Vari Energy Limited. Uh, we are the largest uh, model manufacturer uh, as of now. Uh, we are talking about uh, capacity presently for model manufacturing. Apart from that, uh, we are a vertically integrated company in Solar, having, uh, uh, we are among the uh, EPC companies, uh, as well as uh, we have uh, inverters, batteries, and structures, so that we are supplying the product and also in the EPC for both the and road. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Yasin Sabbal. I'm Ritu Panager, uh, working in the north and east region of India for Solis Inverter. We are the manufacturer of uh, a string inverter. We have a wide range of 1 kilowatt to 125 kilowatt uh, string inverter. Thank you so much. So the first uh, topic of the session is uh, manufacturing in India. And obviously, uh, since the solar industry started in India, uh, we are speaking about the local manufacturing. There are uh, different policies uh, and uh, the different supports extended by central government as well as the uh, state governments. And based on that, uh, obviously, uh, we have started manufacturing of PV modules. Some companies, they have started uh, inverters. Some companies, they have started other components of the solar system. So, uh, I would like uh, to start with uh, Solix. So, uh, obviously, you have given that uh, uh, explanation, but uh, to start with. Yeah, well, uh, when we talk about manufacturing in India, so it was a trend when uh, companies were shifting to Bangalore region for manufacturing. So, looking at the trends, uh, we are also planning. But chemical inverter pay is nothing like that, uh, that uh, making India should be there. So, it is not compulsory to us. But we have a plan, so we just hope. But so you see, uh, it depends on uh, whether you have the local manufacturing available or not. Based on that, government can uh, make it compulsory. First thing is that. And second thing, uh, considering the huge market out there in India, so obviously uh, uh, one must understand what kind of uh, uh, infrastructure is required. So, is there any suggestions or any <coughs> requirements from your side, from government side that you need to support or what kind of support you need? Actually, uh, there are two things. First, the availability of products. So, see, we, even we have manufacturing in China. Our all the products are readily available in our FTD purposes. So, that is one thing um, that we are not facing any problem with the manufacturer that we should have a manufacturing in India. Second thing is that, yeah, uh, because we are expanding our just after the IPO launch in March. We are expanding our factories, so we are going to extend our uh, manufacturing capacity also. So from 10 gigawatt to 30 gigawatt, we are planning in China. So some of uh, like 5 gigawatt we are planning in India. So by the end of uh, this year, December, uh, we will come with a little bit or we will form something that we now be coming to you as a manufacturer. I'll ask the same question to Rajesh as well. So, do you have any anything to say about because you are representing Hyundai? So, anything uh, related to manufacturing in India and obviously uh, it should be uh, with the advancement of the technology. Right now, we are not, not having any manufacturing plant, but we are on process. Uh, and next year, expected uh, we are uh, not to start in Nevada, Rajasthan. With uh, uh, right now, with Poly panels and expected after that we will go for a poly panels. Right now we don't have a So, what kind of support you are expecting from the local uh, government or the central government? And what is forcing you to start the manufacturing in India? You can explain. We are keen to key st uh, key start with uh, manufacturing in India, but uh, due to some uh, pricing issues, you know, and technology number of manufacturers in India. 
due to cells, you know, we are facing a lot of problems with uh, price increase. Uh, that's why we are planning to uh, manufacture plants, uh, manufacturing cells in India, in the Mirana. It will take time, but future is, is very bright for uh, for other heavens. We are keen to uh, do much bigger business. Right now, we have uh, 5,000 dealers uh, in electrical clients. Uh, they want uh, grow with solar. They want a new business. Solar is new business, and future is bright. But right now, all parameters uh, we will cover. Then imported panels and imported cells are one of the cheapest uh, as per today's market. We are future, we are definitely planning to manufacture in Imrana panels. Very short. Sure. So, uh, Ruchir, do you want to say anything? So, we have, uh, we have when it comes to we are uh, focusing on two things. Uh, one is uh, the scalability and the uh, innovation of our products. So, uh, by scalability, uh, from last year we added uh, around uh, 1,000 1, megawatt of capacity to our manufacturing for solar PV modules. And uh, uh, from technology point of view, we are uh, we already are doing monopath and monopath T70. So uh, we have recently come up with this half cut uh, um, module and uh, furthermore we are coming up with we have the AC modules, we have the modeling technology for uh, flexible panels and we are coming up uh, with the um, entire capacity module in a shorter period of time. So we have the things that we have recently. Uh, what is your next uh, plan for uh, the enhancement of the we so we are already cooking so the oil we, so, so we we may be uh, like uh, as on, um, presently um, looking into the future of solar energy and the uh, uh, very aggressive target from the government. Two gigawatt, even two gigawatt, maybe um, may not be sufficient to uh, 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 to cater to that requirement. So we will be increasing further. Uh, so the second topic is again it is related to the manufacturing only. So anti dumping and safeguard duty to the industry. So uh, I just wanted to understand from most of us that uh, whether anti dumping and safeguard duty is really played to support the Indian industry or not. So I think to start with the change. Uh, and it was uh, foreseen that it will benefit the Indian manufacturing, but actually it has not. To that extent, the reason is that uh, uh, we, uh, the raw material prices, if you talk about wafers and uh, uh, this, uh, um, the raw material prices is still in control of uh, China, uh, China's market. So, uh, as on date, if you see that. Um, uh, the prices of Chinese people or um, Indian companies are still there is a five percent, ten percent of uh, difference is still there. So we uh, we need to reduce our profit and save in the market. So even today, uh, this and even the government has uh, uh, you know, put in this safeguard only for two years, which is not sufficient for any company who wanted to uh, come up as a manufacturer in India. Because if you even talk about uh, today's scenario, whatever tenders which are out, they will be, uh, they have the uh, this timeline of 12 months or 18 months. So, they already, uh, the people have planned that uh, after the safeguard duty, after July 2020, when the safeguard duty will not be there, they will be procuring the panel at that moment of time. So, from today, point of view, for large scale project, this is safeguard duty has already been uh, developers are not taking. So I think it has not benefit to the uh, Indian market to that extent, but definitely in some of uh, the cases we have got the orders because of uh, this very So basically, uh, obviously anti dumping and uh, I'm not uh, in support of anti dumping, but yes, safeguard uh, really played a lot. Uh, that's why 
uh, all all of us uh, they, we are enhancing our capacities. Uh, truly said, uh, it was only uh, applicable made applicable for two years. But yes, uh, uh, basic duty will be applicable, and uh, government is working on that. That's what my belief is. And if it comes into picture, obviously. Uh, second part you mentioned about the uh, controlling the prices. So yes, we are some or the other way dependent on a particular country and they are controlling the prices. So that's why the government of India is uh, coming up uh, with a tender to have the backward integration. So that we can uh, control over the cell manufacturing, we can control over the uh, wafer manufacturing. And uh, I don't know uh, further we can go behind uh, because it's a huge investment. Only a few companies in India, the big names, they can invest, but it is not happening. That would indicate that the um, should be there, but uh, the, type, the amount of investment which is required has not been. So, uh, depending upon the uncertainty in the market and the policies, they are coming, the, even the center and state uh, regularly changing the policy here and here. So, uh, so this becomes very uncomfortable for any management to put it in a lot of percentage So, to get an ROI, that ROI will be definitely will not be there in two years or three years time. So, when somebody is putting an investment and they, they need a reason of at least seven to eight years that uh, my ROI will be done. So, as a big, that is the reason why uh, this is putting me put us behind that we have not um, come up with the message as we do sell. We had plans but we were not able to do it. Yeah, so most of the companies they have the plan for self manufacturing. But the regulatory point of view, if there is a policy for say at least applicable for next five years, then that can be done. So Ashmita, do you have anything to say? See, this anti-dumping and safer duty it was initially like implemented to help the manufacturers for to help the like modern manufacturers basically. But on grounds it which it really has not done any like such change uh, to the manufacturers. It, it it was not able to fetch any such benefit as of now because see, uh, I am an engineer in current chapter I see track of this anti-dumping, safer duty, and other regulatory things. So. Uh, the thing is that it was uh, it was done and it was limited to China or two three more countries. But developers have shifted their uh, purchasing power to some different segment, say Singapore, Malaysia, and all. So uh, that was the manufacturer uh, manufacturer is at loss, loss. And second point, uh, if we say if we like put this safeguard duty on every country apart from uh, every other country. Do we have the manufacturing capacity available in India to suffice the current requirement? In actual, if we see the practical scenario, we don't have. So, uh, see, uh, regulations are made if we have the backup plant ready. Right now, we don't have any backup plant ready. It was implemented for two years. It may get extended, but people are dicey about it. People are waiting to see. Let's uh, wait for this. Which is the government or the government? No, 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 no. See, government will always favor the manufacturer only. At least, all, uh, see, always they will favor make in India or they will like encourage the local manufacturers only, this, like Indian manufacturers only. But see, uh, this as uh, uh, Ruchi sir added very rightly that uh, this price control is being controlled by like third party because we, we don't have any uh, like pay for uh, manufacturing capacity available with us. Also, with the regulatory point of view, this if you uh, come across with this BIS thing, so two years back or 1.5 years back, various regulation was the mandate. So till date, also like all the three parts of it, say cables, you are you people are into cables and the inverter manufacturers are not able to get BIS certificate done because proper labs are not there. See, that is government fault now. NABL is not ready to, uh, they are saying that they don't have the ready equipment or they don't have the facility. So, since 1.5 years, our manufacturing facility is not ready to do it. When you have proper regulations, you have to sell module manufacturing, but first you have to get these panels tested. If IP is, for example, IP rated, PI is rated, we don't have left for that. So that is uh, one of the points where government is left. Before, before BIS, uh, there were, which we were uh, uh, using the IC norms. Yes. 
yes. and obviously yes. BIS is uh, more or less it is uh, they are adopting the IC norms only. Yes, yes. So first thing is that. Second thing, uh, if we say about the uh, futuristic manufacturing, mm -hmm. so there are companies they are ready to put in money, but they are waiting for the regulatory framework yes. for next five years. And if it comes, then obviously uh, people immediately can start the manufacturing. Yes. It is not uh, not limited to TV modules or uh, cells, but uh, there are companies they can invest and they can uh, go into uh, wafer also. They can go into I don't know inverts uh, uh, also. Alright, now see pricing is also one of the main issues. We are talking. See, first point is pricing. Second is rate. These both uh, these both are like go hand in hand together. If if regulation part is over, so like pricing can be controlled. But see, uh, we can uh, like control pricing to an extent only. And at present time, what our price is, it is uh, like far better, like far costlier than the price of the third party, or price of the price of the imported uh, like uh, products basically. So there is a difference of around uh, eight to ten percent. In uh, imported modules, uh, I'm taking the name Chinese modules and Indian modules, obviously. But that's why to support the Indian uh, manufacturers, the government came up with the safeguard duty, and I, I'm supporting the, uh, the move. The only thing is uh, the duration is not uh, enough, so it should be uh, well enough so that uh, we can develop ourselves so that uh, we can have the local. Manufacturer. At least government should come up with tenders which like uh, tenders of like a reasonable capacity. Say NTPC comes up with tenders of 250 uh, megawatt, 1000 megawatt. That should uh, like encourage Indian manufacturers only. They keep the clauses like that, that any like uh, any. But that, uh, that is the DCR category projects are already out in the market. Yes, they are, uh, but they are again they are limited and. Uh, Again, so we they do also know they are of a limited category and they are like so as the industry we need to uh, give them the feedback that now what we are capable of. Yes, yes. Because see at the end of the day they, the uh, body is making the tenders and they are also aware that the capacity is not there. India making the manufacturing capacity is not there. And it should not be restricted to only the TV modules. But it, it, will, it should be made applicable for the inverters, inverters also, also yes. because that is the second most costliest uh, component of the system. Yes, yes, of course. So, uh, apart from this, uh, in, uh, third point is uh, importance of equi equipment quality in plant operation and performance. But I think uh, we have the, the panelists are not from the tax segment. See, if you talk about quality, obviously. Quality of exposure is not time important. See, we have seen uh, in the past few years, exposure uh, uh, is quality is an important value. Why is it so? There are tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four exposures. So, because we have seen in the past few years, we have seen that there is a lot of exposure side to that. We have talked about it a lot, but yeah, the utilities are talking about the quality of exposure. We are not saying that there is a lot of exposure. इन्वर्टर में बहुत ज़्यादा फेल हो जाता है और इन्वर्टर इस मॉडल से हमारे डॉक्टर प्लांट एक इन्वर्टर अगर फेल होता है तो आप किसी भी सीधे आरोप पे इफेक्ट पड़ता है आपको इस सिर्फ तेज होता है जब भी इफेक्ट पड़ता है तो अगर इन्वर्टर की बात करें तो क्वालिटी तो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है small you know, difference in price, they go with the tier 3 and tier 4 and then they complain that uh, generation is not coming from our side, there is no problem with it. Plus, one more important thing is that uh, inverter is not working. Because, you see, if you have installed the inverter for 5 years, if you don't have the quality of the inverter, then every other day you are not calling the service and you are not doing the service. Because ultimately it will affect your production. So quality obviously बहुत ज़्यादा important से पहले था इसलिए see in our company also we focus on you know हमारे production में भी सारे चीज़ें भी और और इन सब चीज़ों पर हम total track में रहते हैं customers भी आते हैं क्या लगा रहे हैं क्या सारी चीज़ें वो जाए मैं अपने presentation में भी show करूँ तो ये quality से भी important so like at the solar labs we work on design right so 
we have had the benefit of interacting with hundreds of EPC companies in India and abroad. And we have studied design uh, practices, uh, what sort of components are used. Uh, you know, so like at the start when we are uh, promising the customer that you know I am going to get you X amount of generation. Uh, and then you know the bidding starts, so it's a very competitive industry. So then the rates keep going down and down, there are costs of thing. So it's, it's always that there is cost cutting on either uh, banners or inverters, that's always there. Uh, but also some very small points like structures. Uh, you reduce the quality of the structure, maybe you know the pants fall off. <coughs> or as something as simple as the thickness of the wires, which have a huge impact. You know, we talk about pants and inverters, but wiring, proper DC wiring, proper AC wiring, proper thickness. Those are absolutely crucial parameters to get a proper generation output. So, uh, definitely, I mean, all of these things need to be considered in design. Uh, they need to be considered in the proposals that we give out. And, uh, yeah, I mean, as a country, like, I, I feel that the government should have a policy of standardization in solar, uh, in solar plants. So, like, like now there are, uh, like benchmark prices, right? So we're benchmarking system sizes. There perhaps could be some policies of benchmarking certain technical parameters as well. So maybe the government should look at that. Uh, I would like to add something to it. Basically, as we say uh, in Hindi, "Jitna urda log utta mitha milega." Basically, the problem started when the prices of the system, due to competition, everyone used to reduce the prices as much as they could. I personally have seen uh, 0.5 mm per lens or rafters being used, 1.6 mm, whereas in my projects I never really used below 3 uh, mm or 4 mm. Uh, last year I think I was talking to a person who handles my entire group's insurance and he basically increased the premium of my sites because he was saying the exposure has increased so much in the solar industry that, um, you know, a lot of plants are being blown away during the windy season. A lot of them. In fact, I uh, remember we were bidding for a contract of 80 kilowatt in Delhi and uh, the procurement department of uh, the company, they uh, negotiated with me, I uh, moved out of the contract, I lost the contract by I think 2 key and uh, later on after 6 months, the plant got blown away. Uh, one of the panels fell on the company's uh, director's Rolls Royce and basically he had to pay much more than what the difference would have been in quality installation. So I think, uh, you know, as uh, we used to see in a lot of tenders in Haryana for which we used to build substations, electrical transmission lines, that after within the tender, if the cost was at below 10% of the department's estimate, there always used to be a justification of rate with the superintendent engineer. Where uh, if you are not able to justify the quality or the price that you will be able to work in the tender, then the tender used to be cancelled. So it was not like that anyone had to win the uh, bet. It was like the person who could justify that he can work in this price used to win the bet.